Hello, hello, good morning. It's Monica from Life is Art, and this is the Thursday 10 a.m. technique at the 007 online crop. Today is the first day of our four day event, and we are going to start off creating a layout. And um, yeah, we're going to jump right in and get our crafting going. If you're popping on to watch, just say hello or howdy so I know you're here. And if you're watching later on replay, you can just say replay. And uh, you'll notice I've got my, my verse mat a little bit off to the side. That's so I can have my layout over here beside me. And, uh, and you'll be able to see as we craft along. And we have been looking at the April to June catalog um, all through the month of April. We were looking at the featured collection, which was the Cosette collection. Gorgeous. Now we're jumping onto a different track because it is the month of May. And we are going to be looking at the next collection in the catalog, which is Hey Handsome. And I thought that uh, this would go along just great with our 007 theme for the crop. It is a beautiful collection of very masculine patterns and gorgeous um, like suit materials and plaids and all those fun things. And of course, Father's Day is coming up next month. So this will give us a little jump on some of those things as well. So um, our layout today, we're going to be using some of the uh, pattern papers, the stickers, the cardstock, embellishments, and some inks, and all those good things from this collection. So the layout that I'm going to recreate is this one right here on the opener page for Hey Handsome, and I was struck by how lovely this layout was. I really like layouts that use um, repeated uh, shapes, and so I thought, you know what, I need to recreate this one. It's also got a large 5x7 photo on it, which is nice. Although, I'm going to show you a little method. If you don't have a 5x7, what can you do? So we're going to show that as well. And just how this whole thing comes together. Now, when you have a catalog or you're looking online and you have a, um, a, a layout or even a card that you want to recreate, sometimes the hard part is guessing the size of what everything should be because it's not usually, um, you know, the actual size of what you're doing unless you're at a crop and you're copying somebody else's layout that's sitting beside you. Good morning, Joanne. Nice to see you're watching. Good morning, Deborah. Hey, Heather, joining us from work. Very lovely. Oh, and Misty and Lisa, Linda, and Jennifer are all watching. Awesome. Hey, ladies. And Katie's here, too. Good morning, Michelle. Everybody is up bright and early and going on um, on a Thursday morning. So I have a scrap piece of paper here, and I'm just going to trim myself a nice strip of paper off of here. I could be fancy and use my paper trimmer, but I'm just going to use my scissors because they're handy. <laughs> and I like to keep um, scrappy bits of paper around. And this is just, um, you know, scrappy paper off of one of those multi-packs that you can get at your favorite crafting store. And um, sometimes it's not your favorite pattern and you can just use it for scrap paper. So that's what that is. Now, one thing that's handy about our catalog is that they'll show you down here in the corner what size the layout was when they took the picture of it. So this one says it's a 12 by 12. Now, most often you can guess, you know, it'll it'll look different if it's an eight and a half by 11 or a six by eight. You know, you get used to seeing what the proportions are in terms of overall size. But then it's the little pieces in between where you're like, mm, I'm not sure. So what you do is you take your scrappy bit of paper and I show this method, I think, at every single crop because it's such a good method. And I'm going to start my piece of paper at the far left side, and I'm going to bring it all the way across to the far right side. And I'm just going to make a mark here right at the edge of the paper. And then I can take my scissors and trim this off. And now I know that this strip of paper is 12 inches. 
it's not 12 inches, but I'm going to say in my mind that this is 12 inches. And then I need to make a ruler out of it. So I'm going to fold it in half. And if you're like me and you hate math, you can use a calculator if you want. <laughs> but the halfway mark should be 6 inches because half of 12 is 6. So then we're just going to make a little mark and we're going to mark it as 6 inches. Okay? And then if we take this folded in half piece and we fold it again, we are now subdividing that 6 inches into two pieces which makes these the three inch mark and the nine inch mark. Okay, now you could get out a ruler and you could do fancy measurements to figure this out. Let me see. We're at just over an inch and a half here. So you could kind of, by guessing by golly, get um, the subdivisions, but, or you could fold it. I just tend to eyeball it. So I say we're going to go one inch, two inch, and then go in between four and five. If you're a tiny touch off, it's okay because you can usually guess seven and eight, and then 10 and 11. So now we have our ruler <laughs> that works for this layout, might not work for any other layout, but it's only a scrappy bit of paper. So once we have this, we can say, okay, this is our 12 inches. Then we have this piece of white daisy cardstock that's um, layered on top of that. So let's line it up here and we'll go all the way across and we can see that we're halfway between the 11 and the 12. So this is an 11 and a half inch square piece of white daisy. Then we can come over to our photo and we can measure our photo, which is five inches by seven inches. So then our photo mat is five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And then for the most integral part, how big are these little squares? So these little squares are two inches. So they're two inch squares. And that's good to know because um, one of these particular pattern papers is cut on the diagonal. <laughs> So this particular one right here with the little stripey stripes right there, um, those stripes actually go horizontally on the paper. So somehow they created the diagonal diamond shape on top of that. And one of the things that I have access to when I'm um, looking at things in the, pa in the catalog is I can find the recipe for the layout. It doesn't tell me any measurements, it just tells me the items that were used. And I figured this out on my own. <laughs> but one of the things, so here's the pattern paper. So it's a horizontal or vertical stripe. But I figured out that these thin cuts, the square pattern thin cuts, these are exactly a two inch square, these ones here. And so all I did was I took my two inch square thin cut and I took this little pin stripe running right down the center here, turned it on the diagonal, lined it up, put my washi tape on, ran it through. Now, for all the rest of my squares, I just cut two by two squares just with my paper trimmer. But for something like this, this would be really hard to sort of get the right, you'd have to get a 45 degree angle, so if you want your stripes to go exactly from point to point, um, the best way would probably be to use a two inch punch or this two inch uh, die cut. And you know, if it's only one, then <laughs> it's not so much waste of paper, right? Whereas I think if I cut all of these out with those little squares, I would end up with all the little scrappy skinny bits left over. And that's just seems to be wasting paper to me. But for one, it's all right, it's good. Okay, so let's start creating our layout. The first thing we have is our base page. And oh my goodness, this is my most favorite piece of paper from this collection. It, feel, it looks like you should be able to feel the texture on this. It's a gorgeous woven, like, you know, like tweedy suit jacket feel. Like you feel like you should be able to touch it. But it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous pattern. And <clears throat> because I love it so much, I don't want to waste a whole page of this 
creating um, the background because we're only going to have a little quarter inch bit of it showing all the way around. And now I have to move a couple things here. <laughs> I've got all my stamp blocks lined up here, but I need to bring in my paper trimmer in order to do some gutting out. So this is another technique that we use quite a bit and I show quite often at the crops. And for gutting out, what you want to do is to remove a section of the center of your piece of your base page or a layer. Um, uh, if you're using something like a photo mat and you don't wanna waste all that paper, you can take thin cuts and cut out things from the center or punch a few things out before you um, put your photo on there. But for a base page, the easiest thing is to gut out. Now it's a little bit easier with a paper trimmer that has the measurements right along. So some of you have like a blade trimmer and it'll have measurements along here. So that makes your life a little bit easier. Mine's a little harder because I have a rotary trimmer and there's no measurements on the on here. So I have to do a little bit of by guess and by golly. But what I do is I line it up so that I have two inches here. So obviously I'm lining it up on my left hand side at my 10 inch mark. And I'm gonna do that for every single side. So I'm gonna line it up at 10 inches so I have two inches of overhang. That will give me plenty of space to attach that white daisy on top. So I don't have to worry about that. And then I like to kind of start in the middle. <laughs> and you have to tell yourself, I'm gutting out. I'm gutting out. I'm not cutting the whole page from side to side because it's quite easy to slip and whoop, cut the whole page. And then you're like, oh. <laughs> so you start in the center. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down until I eyeball two inches from the end. So if you have a trimmer that has the ruler along here, you can just come down to the two inch mark and go up to the 10 inch mark. So you're gonna leave two inches at the top and the bottom where you're not cutting. So I'm gonna eyeball two inches and two inches and I'm slowly getting good at that. So now I have a slit in my paper. I'm gonna turn it 90 degrees, line it back up at the 10 inch mark. So I have two inches of overhang here. I'm gonna start in the center and I'm gonna come down to two inches and up to two inches from the top. So now I've got another slit, hasn't quite met because that's the, that's the drawback of the rotary trimmer. Turn it another 90 degrees, line it up at the 10 inch mark, leaving two inches over here, start in the center, go down to two inches from the bottom and up to two inches from the top. So we've got another slit. That one didn't come down far enough. There we go. And then another 90 degrees, this is our last side, lining it up at the 10 inch mark, two inches overhang, putting it in the center, coming down to two inches from the bottom and up to two inches from the top. Now, if you have a trimmer that has the handy dandy ruler, that's probably all you need to do. But for me, because of the way my trimmer is, none of my corners exactly meet. And so what I need to do, and I'm actually going to do it on the back side because it's a little easier to see. Oh, I'm so close there. Look at that. Just a tiny little touch. I just take my scissors and make those lines meet. Look at that. I was so close. Oh, my goodness. And then this one, not quite so close. There we go. And what I'm going to be left with, look, I really overshot that one. <laughs> what I'm going to be left with is an 8 by 8 square that I can then use on other projects, right? So we didn't have to waste all of that. In fact, you could use this piece then to cut out um, your other little pieces if you haven't already done that. So let's set this aside. And we're going to bring in our 11 and a half inch square of white daisy. And so now you can see that we have lots of room for attaching our white daisy and um, and we've saved some of that paper. And we even, you know, there was the part where I overshot a little bit. There's enough of a buffer when you leave two inches around there that it's not, pardon me, whew, my throat's doing something weird. It's not going to make a big difference if you've overshot a little bit. It's never going to be seen. But one thing you need to make sure is that when you apply your adhesive to attach these two layers together, 
that you keep your adhesive right to the edge of the white daisy. Don't put anything in the center because there's nothing to stick it to and you're just going to end up sticking it to your Versamat. <laughs> we don't necessarily want that. Good morning, Katie. You're working too. Hey, Sophia. Oh, yes, my nail color. You know what? I noticed today my husband bought me this shirt for our anniversary on the 1st, and it matches my nail color. <laughs> I just noticed that this morning. It wasn't even planned that way. It just happened because this is a new color that I just bought, and, uh, and then he gave me this shirt. So, wow, great minds think alike. He must know that blue is my favorite color. You know, you'd think after 24 years, he would know that blue was my favorite color. <laughs> He's pretty good at picking up on those things. All right. So now we want to center this on our page. Hopefully center it. Hopefully have it straight. Because with all of that adhesive I just stuck on there, if it's not straight, it's going to be, <laughs> it's going to have to do because there's not going to be any moving after the fact. So there we go, we've got our base page started and now we get to start doing this fun part over here with our two inch squares. Let me just move a couple things. I've got all my little squares lined up over here. So let's start off with our little stripey one. We can just park it there. I'm not gonna glue anything down yet. And we've also got our um, fun pine green pattern that's here. Okay, so I've just cut two by two squares. Now, we want to get these right over to the corner there and line them up. And then we need to fill in some of the other ones because we need to make sure that everything's going squarely. One thing that I can tell you from having measured, and we're leaving a little bit of a gap of white space in between, from having measured, these um, um, squares all sort of end at the six inch mark. So they go about halfway across the page. So if you go too far past your six inch mark, you know you've gone too far. It's like giving somebody directions to a place. So, you know, I mean, you get to the gas station on the corner, you've gone too far. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I travel by landmarks. So we've got uh, some of these are solid squares. So this is Harbor cardstock. We've got some black cardstock. This one is a gorgeous pattern that has words all over it, like smart, heroic, affectionate, carefree, all sorts of things like that. And then we've got some of the Tweety fabric type paper. And we want to make sure we're getting pretty close to the edge there. And let me see what else. Oh, we've got some pine card stock. That's going to be a little bit crooked. Line that up. And I like to do this where I line everything up without using any adhesive. Because if I started in one spot and just worked my way across, it would be all out of whack. <laughs> I, can, I can guarantee it would be all out of whack. Here we've got a lovely plaid. And again, these are all just two by two inch squares. So here we've got another one, and this is the one that has little icons all over it. And we can tuck that in there. And then another Tweety one. And what should happen is what we should get right on the edge of the paper with these four um, two by twos on the diagonal. We should get right up there and be ending right at the edge. So that's sort of your go-to measurement for how well you've spaced. In fact, I think in the catalog it looks like they've almost nipped off the ends of these points, but I'm going to see if I can do my best to not have to trim them because I've already stuck down my base page. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you don't want to have to do that, then don't stick it down yet. Now, you'll notice we have some blank areas around here. So what we've got to do is, let me see, this is rosemary. So we've got paprika, we've got pine, we've got harbor, we've got black, we've got rosemary. Now all of these colors are part of the coordinating cardstock. The rosemary is not. That's just an additional color that they added in. It coordinates with the 
collection, but it's not part of the cardstock pack. So what we need to do now, because this particular one is just on the edge, we're going to take our paper trimmer, i got my little photo trimmer here, and I'm going to line it up from point to point, just like that, hold it nice and securely, and chop, and that should give us the piece that we need. And if I find that I, nope, that's going to be good. I was going to say, if I find that I need to chop more, I can chop a little more since I've already stuck down my base page. So that's another caution. If you think you might run over, then you can always put all this onto the white daisy first. And then, um, and then you can trim the edges just to be, you know, a little, little insurance never hurts. And the more accurate you are with your trimming, like this one looks a little wonky, looks like I had a tapered edge going on there, um, the better it will look on your, on your page. And then we've got a piece of mink cardstock coming in down here that I've already trimmed. There we go. And you can kind of adjust the spacing as you go. And then we've got this one that's going to go here. So let's cut this one from corner to corner. A little trimmer is kind of nice for doing these little, little extra bits. And this layout is kind of one that I think could easily be made into a two-page layout. Now, I wouldn't necessarily just mirror the pattern that's on the left side. You might find that that's a bit too much. But you could do maybe um, a single row of the diamonds over on the other side. You could maybe do two or three photos down. You know, you can really mix it up. Now we've got to do our corners here. So we're going to take our little plaid one that's going to go in the bottom corner. And we're going to trim it in half like so. The other thing is some of these ones that we're cutting in half, you could absolutely use these to, um, to decorate a card too. And then we're going to take this again and we're going to trim it in half. And this time we have to line it up with the flat edge along there and just move it over until we get the point. So we get a nice 90 degree cut on there. And then we can just tuck that little plaid one right on there like that. And then we have one more. We've got a black one up here. So I've already got a half of a black one. And then I can do the same thing. Line the flat edge up and just slide it over until we get the point where we want it. Zip. And that can go up in the corner there. All right, looking good. I know that's a lot of little, little bit of fiddling around, but the next thing we need to do is to look at them. Okay, so most of them are just whatever they are, but there are a few that have had some stamping done to them. So this rosemary one up here has had the stamps from the scrapbooking stamp set applied to it, and it's this sort of argyle pattern that's actually the same pattern as this pine pattern paper here. So we've got this loaded up on a block. No, we don't. I have a block, but no stamp. <laughs> Let's grab this stamp off of here. And I know it's a nice sturdy stamp because it's just a big long one. But again, you're going to want to walk your fingers along to get it off nice and neatly without pulling it. And then we're going to give it a second to rest. And then we can pick it up. Whoops, I got my block upside down. <laughs> so again, walk our fingers. And we can pick it up. And this has been stamped using pine ink. So we're doing pine ink on pine cardstock, so just tone-on-tone -tone stamping, which is a nice technique to use. Let me bring in that scrap paper again that I used to trim my can tell I've done some inking on it. This is from the card last night. Um, bring in my scrap paper so we can have overshoot our image. Just make sure I've not got any weird <laughs> papers in behind. 
I should have seasoned this before I started, but now it's got ink on it, so it's going to be what it is. And then we can go ahead and stamp that on there like that. And pop it off. There we go. And because of this, I should have overshot the top. Because this is a continued stamp, we can we'll attempt to line it up. If I make a boo-boo, I have my other... <laughs> my other image. All right. So there we go. Not my other image. I have my other triangle. Sorry, I hope my head wasn't in the way. So we can just kind of keep lining up the pattern to stamp that out. And now I have a beautifully stamped extra different pattern, right? Very similar to this one, but a little bit different. Same, same, but different. And then this one down here at the bottom, this little mink half size one, we are going to stamp the little um, camera from this stamp set. There's a cute little camera on there. And we're gonna do tone on tone stamping again. This is a really fun te technique when you want to add just a little bit of something something that's not gonna be too distracting you just go ahead, season it by rubbing it on your hand, ink it up with the mink ink, mink ink, sounds like a Dr. Zeus riddle, mink ink, <laughs> and then we can go ahead and stamp the camera on there. So we've just got tone on tone stamping, just like that, and then that can go down here, and I think that's the only one that had mink on it. I've got everything a little jiggled around here. <laughs> Disrupting the pattern. There we go. Okay. So that looks good. I think that's all the stamping we need to do. We can go ahead and start sticking those down. And I want to do it quickly, so I'm going to use some liquid adhesive for this. So just go ahead and add some glue. And the corner ones are easy because you just shove them right in the corner. We're not leaving any white space on the edge because we're imagining that this pattern continues on its way, right? And then I can add this one up here. We're going to start from the outside on the corners. Stick that down. Like that. The other advantage to the liquid glue is a bit of wiggle room. And then I think we'll just go along the edge and add these ones first because it's got a nice straight line to work from. That'll hopefully keep everything square. I'll kind of push those back out of the way. And stick it down. There is a little bit of a gap in between each of these. So it's nice because we have incorporated the cardstock colors in here. We have very few of them that have to be repeated because um, we've got two patterns, one on each side. So a total of six patterns, plus all the coordinating cardstocks, plus the ones that we have stamped on. So lots of variety. <coughs> Pardon me. And then the last one, the rosemary that we stamped on with pine. Okay, and now we can go ahead and add, I'm going to have to shuffle that one, add our pattern papers. So this part's going to take a minute. So how's everybody doing? Has it been a good week? Are you excited that the weekend is coming? <laughs> I don't know about where you are, but we have had nothing but rain here, and it's supposed to continue right through, I think, till Wednesday next week, although Sunday looks good, which is good because my daughter is um, a new recruit with the Air Cadets, and they are actually going gliding on Sunday, and you can't go gliding when the weather is bad. <laughs> that will be her very first time ever in any kind of airplane. 
So it should be a thrill, that's for sure, if she does get to go up in the glider. First time flying, and it's in an airplane with no engine. <laughs> Whew. I'd, I've never been in a glider, but my son Joshua has been in cadets for a long time. Now he's a volunteer with the cadets, and he got to go gliding, and uh, he really enjoyed it. Thought it was very cool. Good morning, Holly. Hey, Sophia. The photo that I'm using for this layout is a photo of my son, Justin, that my husband took. And we're just going to work our way now over to the second row. And he actually did a photo shoot with all three of our kids um, where they were wearing like dress shirts and bow ties and fedoras. And so this paper collection is perfect for that. And Justin's photo in particular, he's wearing a reddish um, bow tie. And so it really goes with this sort of paprika color. It's close enough that, uh, that it works really well. And so that's the photo that I'm using. I'll show it to you here in a minute once I get all these on. And sticking them down. I think it's important to kind of go row by row like this once you've kind of got the placement in in mind of where everything's going because it helps to keep everything square. <laughs> if you started going across and, and then up, I think everything would get a little bit out of alignment. But when you start with those half size ones on the edge with the straight edge, as long as all your lines are straightish, um, you should keep everything pretty square as you work your way across. Now, if you look at the example in the catalog, you will see that not all the spaces are the same. So, you know what? If, if it doesn't work out exactly, it's okay. Not even the art department at Close to My Heart gets it right all the time, right? doesn't have to be spot on. Just best efforts. There we go. These ones that are kind of far away are hard because I can't really see the top edge that I'm lining them up with. <laughs> and here's this one that we cut using the thin cut so that we could get that diagonal stripe going from point to point. Very pretty. Line that up. And again, we're keeping pretty close to that six inch mark because our squares only go over as far as halfway. I love that about the Versamat, that we can use those rulers along the edge to kind of remind ourselves where we're going and, and that we've made it there. So between the Versamat ruler and our handmade ruler to get our measurements, uh, we're doing pretty good, I would say. And there we go. I do like applying this with liquid glue because if you're ever a little bit off, <laughs> you got a half a second to wiggle it. The wiggle room is important sometimes. It's like trying to put on a, on a jumpsuit. <laughs> a little bit of wiggle room never hurts. There we go. Okay, look at that. Isn't that fun? I love those squares. Sue's saying she loves gliding. Sophia getting rain today. Yes. Hey, Tara. Hey, Holly. Yep. I have those simple squares, you know, when you have a repeating shape that just keeps going, it really creates a lot of interest, right, Sue? And, um, <laughs> oh, Robin's watching on the replay. Awesome. These are two inch squares, Sophia. And in fact, this diagonal one was used with the square pattern thin cut. That's a two by two inch. All right, so now the next thing we need is our photo mat. And that was cut out of black cardstock. And um, so we've got our piece here and it is five and a quarter by seven and a quarter because this is a five by seven photo that is in the catalog. Now my photo, let me bring it in here, is only a four by six and I don't have access to the file, so I can't print it any bigger, and neither will my printer print any bigger than a 4x6. 
So this is as big as I'm going to be able to get it. And so, um, you know, there's a little bit of a discrepancy. So my little tip and trick for you is then take some coordinating cardstock, cut a couple more four by sixes. I could just layer up a couple more mats and, you know, triple mat it or would work great. But I thought I would add a little bit of interest by doing um, two photo mats that kind of match and then putting one in the bottom left and put one in the upper right and then centering my photo on top like this. And I think it's just a little bit of an interesting visual image. We're kind of repeating that little square in the corners and I think it's just really fun like that. So that's what I've decided to do for mine. So there's one way that you can make your photo um, fit into the style of the layout without being able to reprint a photo, which is good because sometimes we're using heritage photos, right? We're scrapbooking with photos that are from years ago. There's no way to go back and get a different size photo. <laughs> I mean, we can scan things and we can, you know, we can make efforts towards getting a different size but sometimes they're just not it's just not going to work it's going to end up blurry and weird and so I think that just adding a little bit of extra layers and decoration is a perfectly good way of making up the difference so let's go ahead and stick this one up here and we're going to kind of try and keep it's about a quarter of an inch in on either side and then we can add in our photo like so <laughs> oh sue's like in this layout yeah you like the the extra little um the extra little bits here on the photo yeah it works it's a nice little visual effect right and of course, his bow tie is red, but it's just in the light that it is, it actually really works really well with the paprika. So we can go ahead and add this to our layout. We're not using any foam tape on this. We're just sticking it down as it is. And add this, and hopefully we won't get too much glare. Now, if you look here, you will notice that it's touching up in this corner, right there like that, and about there. And then you wanna keep it the same distance down the side. So keep it nice and straight if you can. And there we go. So we're actually creating a couple more triangles just with the white daisy by doing that. We're creating a nice shape. If we'd gone too far over, then we'd have weird shapes, kind of like this. <laughs> but up here, we've kept that sort of diamond shape going. All right, now we've got some stickers. From the sticker sheet to add, we've got a zip strip to add. So this is one of the zip strips from the paper collection that's got these beautiful stars. So we can go ahead and add this above our photo. Kind of makes it look a bit like a washi tape. Although we didn't tear it, we just cut it. Let me see. Uh, it's just four and three eighths. I didn't actually measure it. I could have. But what I did was I just counted stars. <laughs> That's another way to get a measurement. Just to count whatever's there. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add this. And because my photo doesn't come all the way to the top, I kind of want to leave some of that black showing under it. So I'm not going to put it down quite as far as they have here. They have it about halfway on. I'm going to put it about a third um, of the way on, just so that black line continues across. Okay, and then we've got some stickers. Look at this gorgeous sticker sheet. Aren't these really fun? I love all the words on here. We've got right-hand man. Um, there are these boys who stole my heart. They call me mom. You're a classic. The number one man of the year original. Um, blessed and loved brothers. Awesome. A gentleman always wears a smile. 
Like father, like son, the man, the myth, the legend, just remarkable. Love you so, so handsome, funny, my hero, powerful, strong, tough, dignified, wise, friend, so many fun things. Cameras, glasses, hats, bikes, you name it, mustaches, bow ties, <laughs> it's all there. So let's go ahead, we're going to grab this one, our little compass rose, and we're going to stick this right here. And it's a little bit on the edge of the photo mat and a little bit on the other two um, squares that are there. Then we've got this tag, which is layered up with this, which is a stamped image. So let's bring in, I'm going to scooch this out of the way. We're going to do some stamping because we've got a few things to stamp. So on our stamp set here, we have this one that says premium quality, authentic, always original. And that is definitely Justin. So we've got a new stamp. We're going to season it up. And I was trying to decide what this has been stamped with. And the colors that were given for inks in the recipe of this were mink, pine, black, paprika, and harbor. And I'm thinking that black is the most likely suspect for this one. So that's what we're going to use. Now I'm actually going to bring in my other Versamat here. I have, I have several Versamats. I think I've got five or six. <laughs> but one of them is actually still in really good shape on the back side. Hasn't been banged up too much. And it makes a lovely stamping surface. So I'm going to go ahead and I've got my great big block here. I'm going to stamp this up. Now, the nice thing about this is sometimes I don't get a great stamped image on my table because it's a little bit bowed. Um, but this stamp is actually distressed. There are distress marks. It fades in and out. You know, it looks sort of that faded, um, rugged look. It's been around for a while. So I am not going to worry too much because... Um, it's supposed to be a little bit distressed on purpose. So if my stamping doesn't come out a 100%, we'll just say that's, that's how the stamp is. We'll blame it on, on the style of the stamp, right? It's distressed on purpose. So there we go. We stamped. Isn't that cool? Love that. So there's our big stamp. And then we've also got, um, what else do we need to stamp? We need to stamp some little stars. So I've got the teeny tiny little distressed star. I'm going to season that up. And this is where we're looking. We've got a red, or sorry, a paprika, um, a harbor, and a pine. So I've got those two, three colors here. Paprika, harbor, and pine. So let's start with paprika. We're going to stamp a little star. There we go. And now I need to wash it off because I'm going to go into another color. Grab my stamp chamois. Wash that off a little bit. Make sure it's dry. We've got Harbor. There we go. And then the last one is Pine. Now, you can tell already from looking at what's happening here is that we're going to have to do some fussy cutting. Now... This stamp set does come with thin cuts, so you can purchase it with thin cuts. I just didn't because I like fussy cutting. <laughs> and now let me just check. Um, I believe that is a sticker, that little star. Yes, it is. Um, these are stickers, and we're actually going to, when we get here, we're going to mix up those stickers a little bit because this um, tree and bike really goes with this photo because there's pine trees here and there's a bike. doesn't really go with my photo, so I'm using an alternate sticker um, to, to fill in that space. Okay, so let's get these cut. I can move this out of the way. And fussy cutting. When you're fussy cutting, you want a rough cut first so that you don't have to deal with all the paper. And there we go. And I, I have a little drawer beside me where I keep all my white daisy and um, black cardstock that I cut off. Now for this one, I'm going to kind of make it look like a sticker. I'm going to leave a halo around. 
just like you would if you were die cutting it and you want to just pivot your paper while you're fussy cutting if you guys watch me very often you know that I love fussy cutting <laughs> And for shapes like this, you know, it doesn't take really any skill. You just have to cut it. So I always figure for plain shapes like this, eh, you know, I pick and choose which ones I buy with the thin cuts. And um, because, you know, I can spend my money on more stamps that way. And then for these stars, they're actually cut almost on the line. And I don't usually do that when I'm fussy cutting, but for this one, I will. I will cut it pretty close. I am going to leave a tiny little hair of white because I think it'll stand out nicely if I do. And so you're just going to follow along the edge of the star. The big thing you don't want to do is to cut off any bits of the star. So I think it's almost better to leave a tiny little touch of white than to have an odd shaped star when you're done because you've cut part of it off, right? <laughs> Better to have a little more than too, too little. It's kind of like cooking. <laughs> Better to have a little leftovers than to run out. So there we go. We've got our first little tiny star there. And cut out our second one. This is the harbor one. Sapphire used to be my favorite blue, and then they brought out Harbor, and now it's really a toss-up, because I love them both, because, as I said, blue is my favorite color. I was sorting through my inks last night, because my inks just live on my desk, and because of their magnetic, I just stack them up, and I was actually organizing them, putting them in sort of a color sequence, and I always say I have more greens than greens and blues than pretty much any other color. And it's really true because when I stacked them up, the greens and blues were in their own um, stack. And everything else was in two other stacks, like every other color I own, including black and white. <laughs> and neither of the other two stacks were as tall as my greens and blues. Crazy. But, you know, there, there's always those things that you like. And those are the things you gravitate towards, right? Alrighty. I'm gonna trim that off. Yay, Carol's computer is working. Hooray. Carol was having computer troubles this morning. All the scams that go around these days. Oh my goodness, it's just so annoying, isn't it? <laughs> Bad enough we get telemarketer calls. Now we get scams on the computer. Oy. Alrighty. Yes, this is a great layout, Robin, for a more masculine layout. And, um, or people who just like more masculine stuff, right? I was always the person wearing jeans. I, well, I wore my brother's hand-me-downs when I was a kid. So <laughs> quite often people thought I was a boy when I was little. Because, you know, that's just how I roll. I'm not very girly. This is about as girly as I get. <laughs> All right, so we've got this fun um, stamped image here. We can go ahead and stick this down. Now, I could pop this up with foam tape if I want to, but I think it's just fine the way it is. So I know a lot of you like to do low-profile scrapbooking where you don't add a lot of um, dimension to your layouts, and so it's nice to do that sometimes. So this is going to kind of be centered on this little tweedy bit here, and it's going to overlap onto our photo a smidge as well. And also it's overlapping on the, um, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the compass up there. My brain shut off for a second. I think I just made that a little bit crooked. A little bit crooked. I don't know if I can fix it. You know what? It's not going to be worth it to fix it because it'll, it'll just make a muck. And I just realized that I should have put my tag down first. Anybody else on there going, hey, you're going to put your tag on? <laughs> Isn't there supposed to be a tag there? Mm-hmm. So that just means we're going to snip it a little bit with our scissors. I could have stuck it on there first 
if I had been paying attention. But because I'm not, we're going to snip it with the scissors. Just like that. And you know what? We can save that little bit. We're just going to stick it back on the sticker sheet. Because you never know where we might want to tuck something. And then because I don't put my adhesive right to the edge, I can go ahead and tuck that in there like that. Stick it down. And where are we going here? We've got, oh, our little heart stars are going to go here. But we need to get the awesome sticker. Awesome. See, look at that. We're carrying through those stars. So we've got a star here. We've got stars here. Stars here. We've got stars here. I like that when the same um, image keeps coming up again and again. Let me grab the Hey Handsome Acrylic Shapes. Because we're going to need a few of them. We're going to need these glasses. The bow tie. There's a few things here. We need an arrow. So maybe let me just scooch this over until we discover the ones we need. Now these are interesting because our black acrylics are normally just however they are. But you see what they've done to these ones? Look at that. They have done some etching on there. So it actually has like a different color happening on the glasses. How cool is that? So they look a bit like shades. So we're going to put those over there. And then we also need the bow tie. There's the bow tie. And we also need an arrow. There's an arrow. I love that these are wonky arrows. When you when I put it down here, you'll see they're not a straight line. They're kind of wonky and I think that's kind of fun. And then, and there's two different kinds. There's an arrow with a um, all-together piece at the back. And then there's this one, and that's the one that they've used over here. And then I also need a button. And that's going to go, if I can pick it up, over here. And a little plus. There's a little plus. Now, of course, you can mix up, just like we're going to do... With the photo, we're going to mix it up a bit. There's a star. I think, oh, no, we've got more up here. So again, so here you can see there's a star inside of a star. Now, if you want them together like that, you can leave them like that, but you can also pop out the center. So this has been popped out, and we've now just got the little frame for this star. So that's going to come up here. We also need one of the solid stars. There we go. And another plus. That's going up here. It's probably off the screen, so you can't see where I'm putting it. But they're going there. Okay, so the rest of these, for now, I'm just going to kind of do the grand sweep. There's another pair of glasses here, but they just the frame. That's kind of fun. Now, in this photo, this is actually just before Justin started wearing glasses. But he does actually wear glasses now. So the glasses make sense in the end. And they're just cool, right? So what we... I'm still holding this sticker. So what I needed to do was to find out... And for placing stuff, it's sometimes easier to give yourself some distance from your fingers. <laughs> um, we needed to find out our spacing. So our bow tie is going to go up here. And then this is going to go right there like that and for these acrylic pieces the best thing to stick those with is a glue dot so i've got some these are the micro glue dots which i probably don't need micro micro for these but um some of them are a little bit smaller so then all you're going to do is just touch it and it'll pick up a glue dot and move along touch it and then we can go ahead and add that on to the layout like so very cool and then the glasses let's grab i might do a couple on each side because these are big glasses i could actually use bigger glue dots for this but i pulled out these ones so that's what we'll use so there we go, little glasses, and then we've got our little button, 
eventually you're going to end up with a long tail coming off this. Um, <laughs> coming off this. So eventually you can just tear it off and keep going. But definitely using the glue dots makes this process a lot quicker. And a little star. And a little plus. The plus is the one that you definitely need the tiny little glue dots for because it's just so teensy tiny. And then up here, let's add this star first. Oh, I'm losing, losing track of where my glue dots are. There we go. And tuck this one over here. And then this is another one where the, it's the little glue dots that are going to help because you got tiny little bits of it to stick down. I'm going to put three on here. Make sure it holds. Now, if you don't like your glue dots hanging over the edge, you can just kind of fold them underneath so that they're not accidentally going to stick to anything else. Just fold them under and then stick them on just like that. And then our little plus, like so. So cute. All right. Now, I'm not going to go anywhere with that. Just going to stick it there out of the way because those glue dots tend to get stuck to everything. Now, I have been trying to decide which of these um, stickers I'm going to use to replace the tree and the bike. And I'm thinking of either a gentleman always wears a smile because it's got a hat and he's wearing a hat or right hand man. Let me see. Let's see. This is a little bit bigger, so we'll just try it first. A gentleman. Yeah, you know what? I think that works good. A gentleman always wears a smile. There we go. And then we can add in our stars. You know what? I could use the glue dots for the stars too. Just to make life simple. So we're going to start with the paprika one first. Up here beside the awesome. And then the blue one. And if you want to try and keep them consistent, you can keep the little... Um, uh, distressy bit going the same way if you want. They didn't really, but if it's a thing for you, then you can totally do that. Or you can mix it up because you want it to look different. You can totally do that too. And then the last one. There we go. Now we have some stamping that's done right on the page. So we have one little star here that's going to go here. And then we've got the stamp set has a second star. So there's the solid one here, and then there's one that's just got the points. And so let's grab that one. Oops, <laughs> sliding around. And we'll attach it to our block. I'm going to stick this one back right on the carrier sheet. When you're working with these teeny tiny little stamps, um, it helps to put them right back on the carrier sheet. And, oh, actually, my star has a flaw. So you know what? I'm going to use the other star instead. I'm going to just continue on with the star. My little star with the points had a little flaw. So I'm glad I noticed that. And so I can go ahead and use this other one. It'll work just fine. We're going to use the paprika. And, of course, this is where everybody gets antsy because we're going to stamp right onto the layout. So you want to make sure you didn't pick up any extra ink on your block. And we're going to go ahead and stamp that there. Give it a little wash off with our stamp chamois. Make sure it's dry. And then the harbor, I believe. It's such a tiny little star, it's hard to tell. But we're going to go for harbor, because I like blue. <laughs> if, for, if for no other reason, make sure we didn't gather any, any weirdness. And there we go. <coughs> Another interesting thing about <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> this layout is that quite often we add bling and all sorts of stuff to... Um, to uh, 
embellish, but this is a very guy-ish layout. And so what they have done is they've used the black acrylic and these stamped images and no bling, no like shiny bling. So that's pretty cool, I think. Now we've got our word so handsome to add on here. And I'm going to start, I'm going to use my tweezers. I'm going to actually start at the end. You see how we have an ending point? And so I want to start at the end and hopefully everything will fit. So we've got, this one is just near the edge of that. And we're leaving just a tiny, tiny gap under the photo mat. So I always like to think about, and these are tight together, so we're not leaving any spaces. I always like to think about where the word is starting and stopping and where I have um, where I have to end so that it ends up in the right place. <laughs> so sometimes it works to start in the middle of a word, like if you're trying to center it, start in the middle and work your way out either direction. But other times it's good to start where you have a hard finish, like it can't go past there, but we've got a little bit more space that way, a little more leeway. There we go. Now, if you have difficulty lining up stickers, then one thing you can do is just make them all wonky. <laughs> if lining things up is not your forte, which sometimes is not my forte, um, then if you just make them all a little bit crooked on purpose, everybody will be like, oh, look at that. They made crooked letters on purpose. Not, oh, look at that. They made crooked letters. <laughs> See, there's a difference in how that was said, right? And I do find the tweezers helpful for this. It's a lot easier than my big fingers to do this task. Nestling them up. Now we're going to leave a little gap. And then we're going to put our so There we go. And then we have that arrow to stamp, and we're going to stamp it in black ink. Let me grab my little arrow stamp. There we go. And the black ink. It's always, I always kind of panic almost whenever I open an ink pad over top of my layout, because I'm like, if I drop this ink pad right now, <laughs> uh, <laughs> might not be a good thing. Could have disastrous effects. And yet I keep doing it. All right, make sure we don't have any hanging on ink. And then we're gonna go ahead and stamp our arrow like that. And then we can go ahead and add our acrylic arrow. Find the end, use our little glue dots like that. Maybe we'll put one in the middle. Once you get these in your page protectors, they're not going anywhere. It's going to be all good. So there we go. And I like that they kind of lined up the back end of the arrow with the end of the little word there. Kind of gave it a little bit of placement place on there. And then they've left some spot down here for doing a little bit of journaling um, to add in what we want. But that is our completed, recreated layout from page 14 in the April to June catalog. Blowing some dust off my photo. Isn't that cool though? We did some gutting out with our base page so that we didn't waste all that gorgeous pattern paper. Adding our white daisy, then all of our two by two squares, one of them even cut out with a thin cut. We did some stamping, tone on tone stamping on here. And then also adding in our stickers, stamped images. We've got our large photo mat. And we bolstered our too small of a photo by adding a couple extra photo mats kind of diagonally placed and it kind of carries through that sort of geometric shape that's happening on all over the page. Some stamping on um, and fussy cutting as well as some stamping on the page and our stickers, our acrylic shapes. I think that is just a really fun guy layout, don't you? So I hope you enjoyed seeing that come together, learning those techniques of how to cut um, the shapes and doing the stamping. 
and how to make your photo work for the size of layout that you're working with. So have a wonderful rest of the morning and we will be back on from noon till two o'clock for chat and craft time. All right. Have fun taking a look at the challenges and playing the games. Toodaloo. Bye.